All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Uh, this is Dan King from uh, from Fist Bump Media, and I'm here with uh, Kate. Uh, I always mess up the last name. It, you always say it with cooler accent than I do. Motong? That, that's a good effort. That is a good effort. Yep. You're not the only one either. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. I just call you Kate, so okay, that works. That works. That works. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I'd like to welcome everybody to our uh, our webinar here today. The the four fundamentals of a remarkable online writers platform, um, and you know, writing obviously and, and working with writers is something we're we're obviously very passionate about at Fistbump Media. Uh, for those who know me, I've I've been a I've been a blogger has for about twelve years. I believe that Kate twelve years. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, you know, having gone through the process and, and building my own my own blog over the years, uh, also a you know, humble brag, right? Right. Self published a book, The Unlikely Missionary, then traditionally published a book as well too, uh, Activist Faith. And, um, you know, so I've I've been down that road a little bit myself. But uh, but Kate, uh, let's talk about you too. Kate is one of uh, uh, our publishing consultants here at uh, at Fistbump Media and. Uh, Kate, you want to say hi and uh, t tell us a little bit about you. You just had a book come out, didn't you? I did, yeah. I could grab a copy since you're showing yours off. I'll grab mine from my bookshelf here. <laughs> um, it's called A Place to Land, A Story of Longing and Belonging. So this is a memoir published with Discovery House. I've also self-published a couple of smaller works. Um, but, yeah, I'm kind of just coming off the tail end of that book launch. And I also really love hosting the 5-Minute Friday online writers community. So if anyone's watching who's not already part of it, we'd love to have you come and hang out at 5minutefriday.com as well. We do weekly blog link-ups where I share a one-word prompt every week, and then you've got five minutes to free write on that prompt. So we have a lot of fun with that as well. Yeah, and that's fantastic. I love that community. It's really such a cool, vibrant community. And I know we're going to touch on some things and stuff like that as well, too, in a minute. But uh, uh, it's not even just a prompt on Friday, but you kind of release the prompt on what Thursday night, right? You know, yeah. with a little little Twitter party and everything too. So we have a lot of fun together. Yeah. And yeah. If you want to mention the chat? Maybe we can see who's here from the Five Minute Friday community too. Wanna... Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, just so everybody knows too, uh, uh, if you're watching from the 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 webinar page uh, on the Fistball Media site, uh, there should be a live chat there. Uh, you should be able to run that. Um, I also want to just kind of point out too that if you're having any issues uh, running the video or the feed or the chat or anything like that too as well, you can also hit the YouTube page. Uh, just uh, just send out an email to everybody as well too with also with the YouTube link uh, so you can watch the live feed over there and hit the chat there as well too. But uh, if you are on and you're part of that 5-Minute Friday community, uh, hit us up in the chat and uh, give us a wave and say hi and stuff. I'd love to see who's here. Um, and uh, yeah, use that chat anytime too. So just as we as we get ready to jump in here and get things started, I um, uh, just want to make sure everybody knows too that uh, uh, Kate will do most of the talking. I'll jump in here and there and stuff uh, throughout the presentation and everything, but uh, uh, I will be um, mon monitoring the chat. If you have any questions at any time, uh, I'll be watching those. Feel free to use the chat to, to share those questions. Um, and I made deals with some right away too, but we'll probably also save a little bit of time for Q&A towards the end too. So, uh, so feel free to use that. And uh, I see a couple of people already kind of popping in with the chat. Uh, Debbie Putman, uh, you know, saying hi, Dan and Kate. Uh, uh, sometimes right for the, the hashtag Five Minute Friday, right? And uh, also Jen Rose, uh, you know, giving a big hi from Five Minute Friday. Uh, Evie Foreman and uh, Jessica Kaufman. Uh, Looks like Joan Taylor. Yeah, a few people. Jane Jane Anderson. So we've got a few folks from the Five Minute Friday community. So it's great to, good, great to see all you guys here and everything too. So, um, so awesome. Kate, you ready to start this? We're ready to kind of get this, get yeah. this thing going? Ready to go. All right. Um, <clears throat> so Kate is going to uh, uh, start running up a presentation. And, and as we do, um, I'll help kind of kick us off here a little bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the session today is the, uh, the four fundamentals of a, a remarkable online writers, um, uh, platform, right. And, um, go ahead and jump it over to the presentation so everybody can see that. Um, so yeah, that's what we're talking about today. And, uh, just so you guys know that this, this is based on an e-course, uh, that, uh, that Kate helped uh, put together and, and publish and stuff too. I uh, really kind of covers these, uh, these core ideas, how to find and build community. Um, let's see. 
uh, there you go. Yeah, how to find and build a community, uh, grow your knowledge in online writing, uh, and how to engage with others online. Uh, and uh, you know, I love I love that Kate's sharing this stuff with us and everything because because she's really fantastic at uh, at developing and growing uh, online community and stuff too. So. Uh, so yeah, th this is based on an e-course that we developed, uh, and Kate, the, there's an e-book still out there for it too. Is that correct? There is. Yep. There's an e-book on Amazon that has very similar content, but it doesn't walk you through um, exactly the same format, and there aren't. We don't have the benefit of the videos that you get in the e-course that's available at Fistbump. Right, right, exactly, exactly. So in this course, uh, we really talk about four fundamentals, right? The first one being beginning with the basics. Uh, uh, Kate's going to dive into each one of these in a little more detail and stuff too, but really it's just so begin with the basics. What's, what's the foundational stuff that you really need to focus on uh, if you want to uh, develop your uh, yourself as an online writer and build a platform online and stuff too? The second thing here is to, to find and build community online. Uh, it's one thing to to have a blog and to start writing and sharing with people and stuff, um, but you need to be able to connect with other people, right? Um, a lot of people don't realize too that a blog is also social media, right? Uh, technically, it's considered social media, uh, just like Twitter and Facebook and all the others and everything too. So, uh, so that it's it's really important that we're able to find and be able to connect with other people through our blogs. Uh, the third the third fundamental is to grow your knowledge right uh, um, I can tell you I've been doing this for 12 years and Kate's been doing it for a long time as well too and, and uh, developing online community and, and working as a writer online uh, and it's important to, to constantly be honing your craft uh, and uh, in growing uh, in what you're what you're able to do uh, with your platform online and stuff. And then the next is to, to engage with others, right? So even going deeper than just building community and stuff, there's ways that you need to uh, and want to be able to, to engage with others and uh, that'll help you really kind of reach out and, and expand and grow your platform and stuff in a lot of cool ways. Uh, so that's where we're going today. We're going to be talking through those, uh, the, the, those, three, those four main fundamentals. Uh, and with that, uh, I'm going to, Kick it over to Kate, uh, who's gonna who's gonna start with uh, beginning with the basics, and let's talk about that. Great, thanks, Dan. And yeah, for those who are listening, I know platform often can bring about um, some strong emotions one way or the other, either complete fear over just stepping out there and putting yourself out there, or um, just that tension of you know why do I have to do this? How do I do it? Um, you know, if you're coming from a Christian perspective, there is that added added tension of how do I do this in a way that doesn't contradict my beliefs? And so um, it can be a word and a concept that a lot of people struggle with. And I just want to start by saying, you know, a lot. think about your motives as we go through these um, slides and talk about these different fundamentals, because it's one thing to be able to grow a platform, but a lot of it really depends on our perspective that we take as well. And the perspective of wanting to, to provide valuable content to people, wanting to be a gift to others, and wanting to use the gifts that you've been given as well. So I think that is a helpful foundation as we talk about platform. Um, but it's not always just about the numbers. It's not about the numbers at all from a writer's perspective. I know publishers would say differently, but um, to remember that those numbers are actual people and so much of it is is built upon relationship and I know Dan you would definitely agree with that as well so. Absolutely, absolutely So our first basic if you don't already have a website um, That is it's basically like your home base online where people can find you even if you don't think you're of yourself as a blogger you can still have a website that will give people basic contact information, introduce yourself to potential readers later on. Um, one of my friends who has a book coming out this summer, she doesn't blog, and yet she has quite a number of essays and other articles published on other sites. And so she uses her website as a home base where people can find her and where she can also share links to those other publications too. So um, a website is a really, basic fundamental that's so important and I stuck the fist bump media logo on here because that's where fist bump is amazing at hosting and designing websites um, I've had 
I now have three websites through you guys and um, I have no complaints and I've been so blessed by the way that the work that you've done there. And um, I think it's been five or six years now that you've been hosting my website. So if you haven't, if you don't have a website yet, um, I highly recommend Fist Bump. And I thought maybe Dan, you could take a minute or two to explain to people the difference between a self-hosted site and a non-self-hosted site. Yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So when you start a blog, there's uh, there's really uh, a few different types of platforms that you can go to. Um, uh, and for those of you who've been around for a while, you may you may get this too. But uh, also to help kind of bring some clarity and stuff for especially for somebody brand new starting out. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, some of the free platforms like Blogger and WordPress.com, uh, the, the .com being the key there, uh, are some of these uh, these free platforms and stuff. And really what you're doing is when uh, when you're hosting that way, um, uh, you're really hosting your content on somebody else's website. So you're kind of a little bit at their mercy and everything too. Uh, a lot of times you'll see, you know, especially like WordPress.com, you use the free blog. Uh, you know, maybe they'll be running ads that you really have no control over and you're not even earning any revenue from, you know, so uh, so things like that, that, uh, uh, you know, when you're when you're hosting somewhere else, uh, you just got to remember really, you know, who owns that content, and who really has the right to that content. That's why a lot of people who uh, tend to get much more serious about their their writing and their blogging stuff to go to a, uh, what's called a self-hosted website. Uh, and that's where you go to a company. It could be could be any of the, the GoDaddy, Bluehost, or Fistbump Media. We offer this as well too. Uh, uh, is, you know where basically your your hosting account that what you're paying for is to get space on a server where you own the website, you own the files, you own everything. So you have complete control over it, uh, and you, typically you get a lot more control over design and other functionality and things that you can build into the website as well too. Uh, so going the self-hosted round, especially if you're getting much more serious, is a great way to go. Uh, now, if you if you're just starting out and want to start something free as well too, uh, we're trialing right now uh, a, a free uh, website platform uh, called Fistbump Press. Uh, so it might be where, you know, you get like danking.fistbump.press is your website address, uh, you know, but, uh, but you, can, you can definitely get a free one, uh, get familiar with the WordPress platform stuff too. And then when you're ready to grow into a self-hosted, we can, you know, absolutely help kind of move you over and stuff onto a self-hosted website. Um, one of the other big things too with the self-hosted too that I want to make sure we point out that people are clear on is... Um, is, is maintaining a website. When you go self-hosted, one of the responsibilities then that you typically have is that you're also a webmaster, right? Uh, because you own the website and the files and everything too, uh, it's important to maintain the website well so that uh, uh, you keep it running smooth and safe from hackers and all that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, so that's where our hosting is, is a little bit different. Our basic web hosting uh, includes a lot of that maintenance and stuff too, because a lot of our goal at Fistbump Media is to really kind of come alongside people, uh, take the technology out of the equation and stuff too, so that uh, so you can focus on on the thing that you're really good at, which is the writing, you know, and really focusing on your craft, and developing yourself as a writer and developing your platform and stuff. We'll come along and help kind of partner with you and help manage the technology and stuff. So, so happy to talk with anybody about that too. You can just hit us up at fistbumpmedia.com, like on the screen, and. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit about the hosting. Awesome, thank you. That's that's huge. And like I said, I've got three websites with Fist Bump, and I don't have any plans to go anywhere else. So um, it's been and, a huge help. And Jane wanted to know why uh, why you need three websites uh, oh. instead of one website with uh, different products or services. That's a great question. Do you want to answer that, Kate? Just related to your situation. Yes. Yeah, so um, great question, Jane. I have my personal blog at katemotown.com. And then about a year ago, I ended up splitting that into two websites where I now host 5-Minute Friday on its own site. So I chose to now have 5MinuteFriday.com. And then I have a business called Refined Services, and I have a website for RefinedServices.com there as well. So that was just my preference to have those um, separated out so that it's very clear what the purpose of each one of them is. Hope that's helpful. Great. Do we have any other questions in the chat before I move on? No, we're good right now. Go ahead. All right. So the next step um, would be just to get on social media. I would imagine that many of you are on social media at some level. But at this stage, I also want to encourage you when you're seeking to build platform 
to not get overwhelmed by thinking that you have to do all the things all the time. Um, we will be talking about a couple of tools soon that can help you to not feel so overwhelmed with social media in particular. But I would say, you know, test out each of the platforms. You'll know quite quickly which ones you enjoy more than others. Um, some people really love Twitter and other people cannot stand it. Some people just don't get the point of Instagram and choose not to go there. Um, other people are migrating from Facebook to Instagram because they love it so much. So I would say the first step is to figure out which one you enjoy the most. And then secondly, to find out where you think your people are. <laughs> where are they hanging out? Where are they spending their time? Where's your target audience? Um, you know, I used to work with some realtors who were primarily targeting upper class. Um, and they asked me, should I go on Instagram? Should I go on Twitter? And at that point in time, a couple of years ago, I said, I don't think that's where your target market is right now. Um, let's try something else. But that might be totally different for someone else. So, um, you know, figure out what you enjoy most and what, where your people are hanging out and then invest there and just focus on one thing at a time. And once you feel like you've got a good handle on that particular platform, then you might branch out into another one. But if you try to tackle all three well, it's going to take too much of your time and you might just be treading water. Um, Dan, do you have anything to add to that recommendation? Yeah, no, and that's perfect. Uh, it's, it's perfect advice, I think. Uh, the, the big thing is, is, is really go with what feels natural to you, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, you know, and master that. It's better to master one thing and get really good there than it is to, you know, be a jack of all trades and just be a little bit good at 20 different things. So, uh, so absolutely, that's just spot on advice. So the next step besides the website and social media, there, there will be other resources that will really help you as you seek to build a platform. Um, one of them is simply getting organized and developing a plan if you're a blogger in particular and if you have your website on WordPress. Um, there's a free plugin called the WordPress Editorial Calendar. It's really fantastic. You just stick it on your site. Um, I meant to pull it up and I don't have it, but I, I do have a post on 5minutefriday.com that I can always send the link to later on to show you what it looks like on the inside. Um, but basically, it really helps you to map out a strategy for the coming weeks and months for your blog. And it's amazing just by having a deadline for yourself, even if you don't tell anyone else about it, it can really help to make you more productive. And obviously, the more frequently you post on your site, the more opportunities you're giving people to visit, the more reasons you're giving them to go to your website, and the more you're, A, increasing your traffic, but also gaining new readers and gaining credibility as the expert in your field, you know, as a writer. So that's one um, free tool that I really like to use for planning ahead, even if you don't consider yourself a planner. Um, the next thing is, Obviously, so many of us are visual people and we like pretty things. And so um, even if you don't consider yourself someone who likes pretty things, most of us are naturally drawn to images versus just words. So everywhere you go, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you're going to need nice images, nice graphics. Um, two programs that I recommend, Canva and PicMonkey. Um, Dan, has PicMonkey moved away from any free platform, are they only a paid version now or is there still a, a free version of PicMonkey out there? I believe there's still a, uh, a free version. I have the paid version uh, just because I believe it's always been worth it. Uh, you get access to a lot more fonts and effects and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and it's not even super expensive. I mean, it was like, oh, gosh, I don't know. I think it was a small annual fee or something like that, like 30 bucks a year or something. Uh, I forget. But okay. um, but yeah, the, the cost was minimal enough that I always thought that the paid version was, uh, was definitely well worth it, especially for what you get out of it. So. Yeah, right. Cool. So those are two, um, and we can always send links to some of these things. These are also linked in that e-course that we mentioned. It's available at FistBump. But Canva and PicMonkey are both great places to go if you're looking to design graphics um, yourself. They offer a lot of templates that are helpful. And then I mentioned that I would share some tools about how to not become so overwhelmed on social media. Um, maybe in the chat, if people are, for those who are watching live, let us know if you use any kind of social media scheduler at the moment, 
Um, I have had experience with all four of these. I believe you have as well, Dan, to some extent or another. Yeah. Um, and they all have their pros and cons. I mean, I use each one for different purposes. And sometimes you might consider like checking out the free trial of each one or watching some of the demo videos on each of those sites. But the point is there are ways of, again, planning ahead and scheduling out some of your content that will then post for you when you're not even online. And by doing that, it's keeping your accounts active, it's keeping people engaged with what you have to offer, and um, in the end, it kind of bumps up your profiles when you are sharing more actively in that way. So that's a great way, especially if you know that certain events are coming up or um, certain offers, or you just want to drop a question to your community, but you wanna make sure that you have ongoing conversations, you can plan that out in advance and um, share that way. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing all of your social media through a scheduler. Obviously, you want to show up and engage and interact and answer questions and leave comments and response. But from a, a baseline um, point, these are really helpful tools that can be very useful when it comes to growing your platform. Um, the one I'm currently using that I really love is called SmarterQ. And if you want to double the length of your free trial, you can grab this affiliate link. Um, I meant to mention at the beginning, I will be sharing some affiliate links through this presentation. So if you choose to get the double length free trial at this link, 5minutefriday.com forward slash SmarterQ, um, I will get a small commission at no extra cost to you if you end up going that route. But it ends up, if you think about the time that you save in the end, it kind of pays for itself, I think. Um, anything else you want to add about social media schedulers, Dan? Yeah, real quick, and just a couple of things that I'm noticing in the comments and stuff too. Uh, uh, Jane says she uses Canva almost daily, uh, but uh, also uh, Unsplash uh, for photos. I see a few other people too saying that uh, you know they pay for um, pay for a Canva and pay for Buffer and stuff like that too as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of these uh, tools will have uh, free levels, but they'll also have premium levels and stuff. Uh, and just one other, one other plug too for the uh, the co schedule tool as well. That's one that I've been working with a lot uh, recently. I've been a huge fan of Buffer for a long time. Uh, co schedule has been probably pretty cool for me too because it, it's got a, a, a blog plugin integration for WordPress blog, um, and this will be the, the self hosted as well too, uh, uh, where it not only helps with planning out, if you're writing a blog post, you can go ahead and create social media posts to go out onto a calendar over time. So also kind of combine the editorial calendar tool that you were talking about, where you yeah. can kind of schedule your blog post out and see that, but you can also schedule out your social media associated with each of those blog posts too. So you can even kind of see not just your blog post, but also kind of your social media calendar all in one spot. And uh, I think there's a free, like a blogger version and stuff uh, as well for that too. Uh, I pay for an agency level. Uh, it's got some more bells and whistles and stuff, but uh, uh, but the, the the blog integration is pretty pretty sweet on that too. So uh, definitely definitely a good thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I see a few people saying that the that and all of these apps, the the images, uh, the social media tools, stuff like that too. Some people are paying for some little bit of premium, some as much as $100 a year for something too, and they find it really well worth it to get some of the extra functionality. So mm -hmm. good stuff, great tools. Yeah, that's awesome. So the next, that was the first uh, fundamental that we wanted to discuss. Number two is find and build community online. Obviously those are two different things. First you have to find it, <laughs> um, or you can start building your own. I would encourage all the viewers to do both. Um, you know, I come from a Christian perspective, and I think it's so important that we don't give up meeting together. Obviously, this um, was, you know, this verse was in the context of the church when in Hebrews that we shouldn't give up meeting together as a church body. But um, I think in in many ways it filters over into online relationships as well that we can find places to gather online when it's not possible to meet in real life. So. Um, and we do so to encourage one another. And just from personal experience, I've had so many amazing opportunities to meet a lot of the people I've met online in real life. Um, this was our most recent Five Minute Friday retreat that we had in Kansas City. Uh, it was our second retreat ever. And um, 
all of these people were, were met each other online first before we met in person. So just to kind of show you that it does, it does matter. You know, the people that we're investing in online could become really good friends who are really um, an important part of your life too. So let's first start about, excuse me, first start with talking about how to use Facebook to find and build community. And I'm going to show some lists of Facebook groups and Facebook pages. Um, but I just want to say a quick note, as I've presented on this in the past, um, sometimes people have confusion over what is a Facebook personal profile? What's the difference between that and a Facebook page and a Facebook group? So I'll see if I can explain it in a way that makes sense for those who aren't quite sure. Um, your personal profile is what you set up when you first join Facebook. It's the very basic level that everyone has as a Facebook user. Then you could have the option to have a Facebook page. Now that could be for a business or it could be for something like Five Minute Friday that's an online community. We have a Facebook page where people like the page or follow the page, but the page itself doesn't have Facebook friends. So the Facebook personal profile is where you would have your Facebook friends. And then the Facebook page is more of a public page. Um, all of the posts would be set to public. You wouldn't just be sharing with your friends. And then you also have the added benefit with a page of being able to see page insights and see what kind of analytics are going on in terms of um, insights into how many people saw your post, how many people clicked on it, how many people commented, liked it, that sort of thing. You can really gauge where the interest levels are. Um, you can schedule posts on pages as opposed to you cannot yet do that on personal profiles. So that's another added benefit of a Facebook page. Um, so those are some of the main differences there. And then Facebook groups also have their own settings where they could be secret, public, or private. And I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials out there to, to um, also explain the differences between those three options of groups. But groups would be maybe you have um, a book launch team and you want to have a group that only those people in the group can see the posts and you want to interact together as a group, but you don't want it to be public. Um, maybe you have a writer's group or something like that where you're interacting with the members of the group, but you're not necessarily Facebook friends with those individual personal profiles. Does that kind of make sense, Dan? Do you have anything to add to the differentiation between those three Facebook offerings? Yeah, no, that, that's that's right on to. And I was trying to follow along with some of the chat too, so I'm only catching kind of pieces of what exactly what you were saying. But um, uh, yeah, tip, typically, uh, you know, you hear a lot about uh, Facebook is going to be pushing down my posts and stuff like that too, and then they're not going to get as much visibility. A lot of times that's with the page, um, you know, but, uh, but remember too, you know, your personal profile uh, is, is typically always going to get really good reach. Uh, uh, that's where you can get tend to be a little more personal. And uh, and then as you interact as a person too within, within groups around your community and your blog and your topic and other people's groups and stuff like that too, you can really develop some great relationships. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm pointing, uh, makes me think real quick too, just uh, uh, Missa is uh, talking about how uh, in the chat, uh, how some of her most re uh, amazing relationships and motherhood have developed online, hoping I can find it with writing as well because I desperately need it. Uh, I'm the only one in my circle who's writing. And uh, Missa, I would just say absolutely. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think especially within groups and stuff like that too, yeah, you'll be able to get to, to meet people and interact and engage with people and stuff too. It's really kind of the idea and the intent of it and stuff too, to uh, be able to you know find a place like that where you can encourage each other and spur each other on and stuff like that too in our craft of writing and everything too. Yeah. So good stuff. Yep, thanks for that. Um, so yeah, the, the direct links to the groups and the pages that I'm about to share now are also available in that e-course um, called the Startup Guide for Online Writers available at Fistbump. So, um, this plus more, but here's a sample of some groups that you might look up on Facebook. Um, and then Facebook pages where you wouldn't necessarily have the same level of interaction, but they definitely provide really valuable content are um, listed here as well. And again, the direct links to those are in the course. So just to kind of, I appreciate what you added to Dan about you'll, you'll probably still get the best 
um, reach with your personal profile, but if you are in a more public space and you don't necessarily want to be Facebook friends with all the people who want to follow you, then you might consider going to a page. Once you go to a page though, Facebook does have more algorithms in place to control what gets shown and what doesn't get shown. So there's pros and cons of everything. <laughs> um, all right. So that's Facebook, how about using Twitter to find and build community? Um, again, just kind of bringing it down to the basic level. Twitter is big with hashtags, as is Instagram. Um, not so much Facebook yet with hashtags, but for those who aren't sure what a hashtag is, um, you put the little number sign in front of a word, make sure you don't have any spaces between your words. And the way that hashtags are useful is that you can first find other people by searching for hashtags, or other people can find you if you implement excuse me, hashtags into your tweets. Um, this is a sample or an example of what it looks like when you are using a hashtag. For what Dan mentioned before our Five Minute Friday weekly Twitter party, we meet every Thursday evening from about 8.45 p.m. Eastern time. So you're very welcome to join us for that. Um, if you are following the 5 Minute Friday Twitter party, you would type in this hashtag and search for it on Twitter. And Twitter will then filter out your Twitter feed so that you can just view the conversation that's going on with that hashtag. Um, there are other tools available to help with filtering and kind of sorting the conversations. Um, one is called Tweet Deck. I know there's others as well, but it's a fun way to just kind of jump into a specific conversation. Um, if, if I go back here, like Kidlet, if you're a children's writer, you might search for the hashtag Kidlet and find other children's writers that you didn't even know existed. So that's kind of a fun way to find people and help other people find you on Twitter as well. Um, and then Twitter parties, you might schedule a time and say, hey guys, we're meeting. The last day of every month, we're going to chat about. Um, I had one lady in one of my presentations. She was a, a cat person, and she was all about cats. And so she wanted to find people who also loved cats. So you know, you might start a hashtag about cats and um, gather at a certain time, and then chat with people on Twitter. Um, I just love cats. I just love cats. <laughs> I don't know where that came from in my example, but there we go. All right, so that was Twitter. Just want to keep moving along so we have time to get through everything. But um, again, feel free to leave questions if I'm going too fast. Um, let's talk about blog link ups for a second. Mm -hmm. Sip some water. I host one called Five Minute Friday, as I mentioned. I use a tool called InLinks. If you are interested in hosting your own link up, um, this is, I pay two dollars and ninety nine cents a month to use the features that I want um, to use for my link up. When people have already linked up on the Five Minute Friday site, this is what it looks like. Um, this was just a screenshot that I took to join the link up. Um, you click this blue button where the arrow is that says add your link. And then you have the opportunity to follow the instructions after you click the button to insert the actual URL of your own blog post that you've written um, to have other people also see your post. And I forgot to fix these words that I said I was going to fix later, so sorry about the, <laughs> the mess. Up. I know. Can you believe it? Totally dropped the ball. Um, here's another list of blog link ups that exist out there besides Five Minute Friday plus Five Minute Friday. Um, different days of the week, people are hosting weekly link ups, and I would encourage you to check these out. Again, the direct links are all in the course if you're interested. Um, but blog link ups give people an opportunity to write their own blog posts on their own sites and then share those with other communities and other readers. So these are fantastic ways of finding other fellow bloggers, um, finding people who are writing on similar topics that you are. Um, someone mentioned motherhood, you know, finding other mom writers, um, and then getting readers for your own work too. It's that's one of the reasons that I joined Five Minute Friday as a participant before I gained before I became the hostess. 
um, was just to, you know, have opportunities to read other people's work and have people come over to my site as well. So this is where a lot of relationships are built. Um, and because they happen weekly, if you go often enough, you really start to get to know the people who are participating and it becomes its own little community. So if there are any questions about blog link ups in the chat? Yeah, let's see. Uh, Carol Graft was just saying blog link ups. Uh, do you post new posts for each link up or is it better to just pick one link up? That's a good question, Carol. Um, I have seen people will write at the bottom of their post on their site. Um, this post was linked up at, and they might share the places, you know, this link, linking up this week with tea and word and coffee for your heart. And so people do share the same post in more than one link up. And then they just mention that at the bottom of their post. And it might be nice for you to add direct links over to whatever link up you're sharing it on so that other people can go find that link up as well. But yeah, it's totally fine. Some of them, um, it doesn't really apply, obviously, if they're looking for a specific topic. So with Five Minute Friday, you know, we write on one particular word. So it might not make sense for someone to share a story that they wrote maybe for Coffee for Your Heart if it's not related to the prompt for that week. But I think a lot of the others are very interchangeable. Yeah, and, and I, would, I would say that to me, that would be the big key right there is that it's relevant, right? I, I wouldn't just post a link on a link up just because you have a link to post on a link up. Right. If it applies and it's relevant, uh, that's a big thing too. Because, you know, I think when you're developing reputation online, and everything too, you don't want to be known as the person who just like just posts whatever and it doesn't even have to do with the topic and stuff. You, you know what I'm saying? So if yeah, the topic fits, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's good. Absolutely. Cool. Great. So grow your knowledge. Some people might be saying, well, yeah, why, how is that going to help me um, grow my platform? But um, it really, the more you know, the more you can share, right? The more that you grow as a writer, the more that you have to offer. And so I encourage people to listen to podcasts. Um, that's something you can do while you're washing the dishes, you know, folding laundry. That's usually when I <laughs> listen to podcasts. Um, makes the laundry less painful to, <laughs> to do. But um, here are some that I recommend. I, I really love Ann Croker's podcast. It's short and sweet, usually about seven minutes. Um, very practical help. And so you never know. She offers a lot of content that makes me think, oh, I could write about that. I, you know, this is something that I have a story to share about that, even if she's not necessarily throwing it out there as a writing prompt, just from hearing her input on a certain topic, I automatically have new ideas. And so even if you're feeling stuck in the writing life and feeling, what am I going to blog about? Um, start listening to podcasts, um, start reading books. And I do share some recommendations for books on writing in particular in the course, but I encourage you to read widely. You know, if, if you're a nonfiction reader, read fiction too. If you're a memoirist, read poetry, um, read within and outside of your genre because it will only enhance you as a reader and a, a writer, excuse me, um, but it will also develop your skill and give you more to think about and eventually write about later. Um, so it's so important to invest in yourself as a writer through, through good books. And that's some of the ways that I've gotten out of a rut as a writer too, is just um, when I'm feeling like I don't, I don't have it that day. Like I'm not feeling inspired. I pick up a book by an author that I really respect and admire. And it's, you know, it really kind of helps to get the inspiration back. Um, but we'll be talking more about how you can use those books that you've read to help with your platform specifically in step four, in fundamental number four. So we're moving on to engage with others. Obviously, yeah. oh, go ahead. Real, real quick too, uh, I'm seeing a few people, uh, uh, giving props to, to Ann, Ann Croker. Uh, yeah, she's an old friend of mine from the High Calling and stuff. So, yeah, she's fantastic. She really knows what she's talking about. So uh, it's great to hear everybody's uh, everybody's digging that. Um, I think uh, I think with the learning, too, as well, uh, just a little self-plug is uh, with this about media, um, you know, 
I'm, I'm trying to renew a commitment to doing more of these kinds of webinars for folks and stuff like that too going forward. We used to do a bunch of them. We kind of got away from it for a while. Um, so, so I'm hoping this is the first of, uh, of several that we'll be able to get on the calendar too. But we're also releasing several e-courses and stuff that uh, uh, will kind of focus in on different aspects of, you know, how to manage your blog and how to do this or, you know, work your email subscribers and, you know, that kind of stuff too. So uh, so stay tuned and, and watch the, the Fist Bump Media channels as well too for resources that can, can help you learn too. So. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah, I've shared those links in the course as well. Um, that self-pub course that you guys have was hugely helpful to me too. With It's very step-by-step. -step. If you're looking for specific instructions on how to self-publish a book, I really benefited from the, your self-publishing course that you have there. So thanks for adding that. Cool, so engage with others. This might sound a lot like fundamental number two where we were talking about finding and building community online. Um, but this is a more, almost like a more intentional in, investment. You have to, it requires a little more action, <laughs> this engaging at a, at a deeper level. Um, one recommendation is to consider investing in your writing life through a writing support group. Um, maybe it's just three or four writers who happen to live nearby and you commit to gathering twice a month or once a month and you share, you know, the last five pages of your work in progress or Maybe you you meet up over Skype or over Zoom and encourage another, one another that way, just for the sake of accountability. Um, there's definitely you know a lot of libraries have groups like that. You might look into that just to have other people around you in your life who are like-minded and encouraging you in that way. Um, and you never know how those that might open doors and become networking opportunities, and you can then later share each other's work and it kind of amplifies and magnifies your work as well. Another option that I really love is called Hope Writers. It's a membership site. Um, they only open once or twice a year. Um, they are opening their doors on Monday. So this is a limited time offer, but if you want to head over to 5 friday.com forward slash Hope Writers to jump on their waiting list, Again, that's an affiliate link if you choose to use that. Um, but Hope Writers, you pay a monthly amount and you get in a private Facebook group where they offer so much encouragement, so much knowledge and wisdom from published authors. They also interview publishing professionals weekly. And I've heard some amazing interviews live in their Facebook group from publishers at Baker and, you know, literary agents and marketing specialists and other published authors. They've got a wide variety and it's all archived. So even if you come in now, you get to see those recorded interviews that have already taken place. So they have a whole system set up there that's really encouraging. And um, I've benefited from that immensely. And just within the Facebook group, you drop a question and a lot of people will help you <laughs> and jump in and answer your question from their experience. So um, doors open Monday. I think it's only open for five days. So if you want to get on the wait list, you can go to this affiliate link. Another similar site is called Compel Training. Um, Compel is run through Proverbs 31 Ministries. I don't have personal experience with Compel, but I've heard amazing things about it. And um, if you have a specific goal that you're trying to achieve as a writer, I can guarantee you'll find quality help through Compel as well. Um, another step to when you're engaging with others is to submit and invite guest posts. And that might seem scary at first, and it probably will be for the first couple times you do it, but there is a whole host of places out there that you can submit guest posts yourself. Um, again, I've shared links. I think we've got at least 20 or 25 links to places in the e-course of publications that accept guest posts. And this is how I got started as a writer online. Um, I pitched my first article to a site called Ungrind, and that was back in 2010. And um, much to my surprise, it got accepted, and I suddenly kind of got on this kick where I just became obsessed with <laughs> submitting content online. I had spreadsheets, I had I was researching places to submit work, and of course, 
nowhere near every one of them got accepted. In fact, it was a very low percentage of those that got accepted. But the whole time it meant that I was writing, so I was sharpening my craft, I was getting practice, I was learning to deal with rejection, and I was developing you know, some sense of perseverance to, to keep trying. And in the end, um, my editor at my publisher, this is becoming a long story, but I think hopefully it will be helpful to some of you. Um, when I submitted my book proposal to my publisher trying to get a contract, they ended up saying that the volume of places that I had had articles published was quite a um, significant factor in their minds when they decided whether or not to sign me to sign a book contract. So I want to encourage you and say it's not a small thing to have articles published. It really can be helpful. Um, it opens up doors for new audiences, new readers who might then come back and visit your site. And again, you're just getting that practice. You're, you're learning how to write for different audiences. You're learning how to write on different topics. And it can be a huge way to grow your platform. So a lot of those links are available in the course. But I would encourage you, too, if you have your own website, to invite other writers to your site. Um, again, it's such a great way to meet people and a way to enjoy other styles of writing and then to have their readers come over to your site and potentially have a broader audience there when someone says hey i'm over at so and so's website come on over and read um, they might really like what they see and stick around for a while and maybe join your email list or read other posts that you've written yourself um, so i really encourage that back and forth reciprocal relationship there with submitting and inviting and in the course, too, we have some um, free downloads like checklists and trackers so that if you want to track places that you've submitted your work, you can download those within that Startup Guide e-course as well. Any questions that are coming through on that or any um, input that you have on that topic, Dan? Uh, no, this is great. Uh, really, in the chat, seen a lot of uh, shout outs and stuff, too, for people you know, hey, I'm part of, you know, Hope Writers, I'm a member of Compel, you know, Compel's great, you know, things like that too. So, uh, so yeah, just a lot of really great feedback uh, that, uh, yeah, uh, some people who are familiar with some of these things that you're talking about and getting in places and writing, you know, contributing in different places, stuff like that too, uh, they're all agreeing with that. Um, but yeah, I think specifically with uh, with guest posting and stuff too, it's, it's definitely uh, something that, uh, that can really, really boost to not only from just a, a getting out there, but even from a search engine optimization perspective, kind of getting on the technical side of things too. Uh, one of the things that matters is, is uh, creating links from other websites back to your website will give your website more credibility with the search engines. So, uh, so if you can get out, even if it's just for somebody else's blog, uh, that gets a, you know, a, a blog post out there with a link back to your website. If you get out there and able to get onto some of these bigger sites, uh, you know, with more credibility, uh, then that definitely helps even even more. So, uh, so good stuff. There's there's a lot of advantages, uh, uh, not just from an audience perspective and connecting with people, but just even from a technical perspective uh, for for doing stuff like this. So, very right. good. Thanks. Yeah. As you started talking, I thought, oh, I forgot to mention that. And would you say that's similar for um, blog linkups as well? If quite a few people are linking back to your site because of a blog linkup, even if it might not be a higher profile site. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, one of the big signals that uh, uh, search engines look for is, is just links back to your website, right? So, so however they're created and stuff like that too is definitely an advantage. Um, you know, I think the big thing is, is as long as it doesn't look spammy, right? So, so don't don't go crazy with like oh, I'm gonna get my link and you know throw it in the comments and everything. You know, just. Just be natural with what you're doing, and and uh, but but those all those links are, are definitely of great value for search engine purposes. Mm -hmm. Thanks for adding that. That's great. So the last thing I have, I mentioned that I would say a way that you that all those reading of books that you're going to be doing um, can benefit you from a platform perspective is if you become a book reviewer. So who doesn't love free books, right? Um, a lot of these publishers, these are primarily Christian publishers, but there are um, several others as well. If you just Google a publisher that you're interested in and search for a book reviewer program or blogger review program, um, many, many publishers have this available where they send 
a limited number, but they send books out um, to reviewers in exchange for a, a review, usually on Amazon and possibly your blog as well. Um, but you can sign up for one, sometimes two books per month from each of these publishers, depending on how fast you can read, and commit to then writing about the book um, either on your site or on some of the retail sites like Amazon. Now, the way that this can help you with your platform is, first of all, you are, um, I totally just lost my thought. First of all, you're reading content that's gonna help you have other things to write about. So you'll have another blog post for your site that you can share. You're gonna have more insights into that topic that you can pull from and draw from for your own writing. And I would encourage you to go the extra step and see if you can reach out for an author interview. Um, it sounds terrifying at first, but if you, maybe they have um, contact information on the back of the book, if it's a review copy where you can talk to a publicist or the publisher themselves about interviewing the author. And I've had some amazing opportunities to connect with authors of books that I've really loved who were very happy and willing to answer four or five questions that I could then use in a blog post on my site and um, have like an exclusive interview on your website with an author. I've also been able to connect with authors on Twitter, um, you know, by sharing quotes from their books. You can get conversations going on Twitter and Facebook by tagging those authors. They love to hear when people are reading their books. They love to see quotes from their books floating around and they're very appreciative of that. So it's a great way to build those relationships and network as well um, and build your library. But just to have that networking opportunity where suddenly you never know what kind of doors will open. And maybe in the long term, if people, you know, say Baker Books, for example, sees that you're really invested in their content and their, what they offer, um, that might be helpful in the future if you're looking to publish your own book as well. And then it gives you a better idea of what's going on in the market. And um, if you're writing a book proposal, you know you have to have comparative titles. So it helps you to know what's out there, who's writing what on which topics, and um, what you can then contribute yourself to the conversation. So that's one way. It um, sometimes sounds too good to be true to get free books, but it's a great way that you can use to your advantage in some ways as well. So those links, again, all the links to the book review um, applications are also in this e-course, Startup Guide for Online Writers. Yeah, and, and I'll say one thing about that too, real quick, uh, and just really to kind of reiterate uh, some of what you were sharing in your experience. Uh, I've developed some really great friendships with other writers mm -hmm. uh, because I reached out and said, "Hey, I want to, I want to review your book." Right? Um, you know, and, and in fact, one of them, uh, is a writer named uh, Dylan Burrows, is a guy that I co-authored a book with eventually too. So. Uh, so, so really, really neat relationships and stuff can come out of that. Uh, if you're getting super fancy and technical and think you can handle it, uh, you know, there's ways that, uh, that you can even, you know, you know, step out there and do a, do a video hangout interview like this, you know, and, and talk to them for a few minutes and, and have some back and forth answering questions. But a lot of them too, even at minimum, will just, you know, take an email, you know, email them five questions or something like that for your blog and they'll answer them. And, and give you some, some really great stuff too. So, so that is good. I just want to uh, reiterate that. That's uh, some, from some fantastic stuff there. Yeah, that's great. A lot of people are doing Facebook Live. You can increase the reach on your own Facebook page as a result. So all kinds of ways and opportunities. Um, so I switch back to, to the video, like stop screen sharing again. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I think we're at the point here too where uh, we've, we've just kind of worked through um, a lot of the main content and everything of the of the presentation. So I'll kind of open it up for, for Q&A. Um, uh, just kind of put a shout out. If you have any questions at this point too, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'll try to watch that and we'll try to answer those the best we can. Uh, but I know, I'm gonna scroll back and find it now. Uh, Jane had a question. Um, and Let's see, I think it's right here. Yeah, advice please. Uh, if you don't like the name chosen for your blog, do you recommend buying another domain name and starting over? Uh, do you have a favorite place to buy a domain name or register a domain? Uh, so, uh, so without trying to get too technical on this and stuff too, 
changing a domain name can be a little tricky uh, when it comes to search engines and how they scan your content and stuff, right? So if you have a domain name that you've been using for a long time, uh, that's one of the things Google looks at and says, hey, this is credible because it's been around for 10 years, you know? Uh, so, you know, if you change the domain name, you can end up losing some of the juice there and everything too from that you might already have. But here's the thing, if it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit, right? Um, in fact, my, my personal blog, uh, BibleDude.net, uh, just in the last year, I changed to BibleDude.life uh, because now there's some domain name extensions uh, like .life and uh, .blog and, you know, a lot that, that are available now these days that weren't available then. That just fit a lot better for, you know, what I really want to try to write. So it was, it was a good fit for us. And I, I just kind of deal with, you know, whatever hit that we can take. Uh, but we can also uh, make sure that if you do change your domain name, uh, that the old domain name can be redirected to the new domain name. If you, so if your website changes, you can keep the same website, change the name on it, right? And then redirect the old name so people hitting those links land on the new website. So, so technically it can be done. Uh, I wouldn't be afraid of it from a technical perspective, but there could be some technical consequences and stuff. So, uh, but uh but yeah, as, as far as uh, a favorite place to uh, to buy and register domain names, uh, that would be fistbumpmedia.com. Fist bump. <laughs> Fist bump. <laughs> That's why I bought mine too. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for that. I'll let you keep an eye on those quest the questions to the chat. But I just want to say, you know, a lot of this, when we talk about platform, it can, for me as a writer, can feel like, What's the magic formula that I need? What am I missing? What are the hoops that I need to jump through? And it's really, I've come to discover after you know six or seven years doing this, that so much of it is really about relationships, just building the relationships, reading other people's work, commenting on it, offering valuable work yourself, um, trying to be useful and helpful and be a blessing to other people. If that's your main prerogative, often your platform will grow naturally when you're not even trying because people see that you're genuine and sincere and you're not just trying to gain more followers. So I just want to add that encouragement too, that yes, there are strategy is important and there are things that you can do to, you know, make that message heard in a better way, which we all want to do obviously. But like you said, we don't want to be spammy. We don't want to be insincere that it's really all about being genuine at the, at the end of the day. Yep, yep, absolutely. All right, I do see one other question too, and it's a little bit more on the technical side of stuff. Uh, I had mentioned uh, doing like a video hangout thing uh, for author interviews, uh, and uh, any you know any suggestions about where to learn to do all the techie stuff with that? Um, hey, if that's something that might provide value, then it's absolutely something that uh, you know. Like I said, we're we're trying to commit to doing more of these kinds of webinars to help people learn skills. Uh, e-courses, things like that too. So, so one thing I'll say is if you do have uh, thoughts or questions or things that you think is like, would, hey, it'd be great if there were a resource to help me learn how to do this, yeah. email those to me at learning at fistbumpmedia.com. And uh, we'll definitely take all those suggestions and kind of kind of work them into a queue and weigh those out, you know, what's going to be the best way to, to deal with that stuff. So, uh, so happy to help try to develop the resources. That's you know, uh, always kind of been part of my heart and everything with a lot of this too. Uh, one thing I do want to do, I'm, I'm still kind of watching around for some of the questions. I don't see a lot of other questions just yet. A lot of great feedback and everything. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Can I just quick add to the yeah. last question? Um, yeah. Option in the short term, while Dan's busy writing that course that will be so useful to all of us soon. Um, I've recently just been on some Facebook Lives that were pretty easy. You do have to have a phone to run them. That you can, or excuse me, if you want to, if you want to do a joint interview as a Facebook Live, you have to do that from a phone in its current setup. You cannot have an interview directly on Facebook, Facebook computer to computer. But if you start a Facebook Live on your phone and you have someone that you would like to interview, you get them to start watching your Facebook Live video from their phone, and then you invite them to join your live interview. So that's one option. It's a little bit sticky, but um, you know most people have a phone. I had to install Facebook on my phone to be able to do it because I took Facebook off my phone. <laughs> but if you have two people with Facebook on their phone, um, you can also, also do a Facebook Live, which might be a short-term solution. 
Yep. Absolutely. All right, cool. And happy to hang out for a second and see if anybody else has any other questions and stuff too. A lot of thanks. And this has been fantastic too, but a couple of quick notes, some housekeeping. Uh, if, if you want to dig in more into some of these uh, subjects and stuff too that we talked about, uh, there is a link uh, button directly below the video on the, on the viewing page um, uh, to, to be able to buy the, uh, the e-course. Uh, it's a great e-course. Uh, Kate put it, put it together. Uh, helps to kind of support from a technology perspective. But she, you know, all of her great content, thoughts, uh, all the links that she mentioned, everything too, are in that e-course. Uh, you can get that uh, link below as well too. But also further down the page to uh, uh, where it's uh, hosted by Dan and, and Kate and stuff too. Uh, we're also willing to make a, an offer, and we'll make this available uh, until the end of the week. Uh, so through Friday. Uh, if you want to grab it, uh, go ahead and grab it and book a time uh, by then too. But um, we would be happy to do a uh, uh, just a one-on-one -on -one kind of consult with you, uh, review your platform, uh, you know, check out the website, check out the social media and stuff like that too as well, and uh, kind of coach you through on some stuff too. Uh, it's a session we would normally charge about $97 for too. It's a special to you guys for watching this. Um, uh, we will, if you book it now through the links at the bottom of the page here too, we can do it for, uh, for $39, uh, and we'll check your stuff out with you, talk with you and stuff too, and, uh, uh do about a 30 minute little, uh, kind of, kind of meeting consult over, uh, Google Hangouts, Skype or phone or whatever works best for you and stuff too. But, uh, definitely give you some great coaching and advice, uh, for you and your platform specifically to help you kind of grow. Uh, and, uh, and reach the goals that you want to reach and stuff too. So, so feel free to use those buttons below and, uh, and uh, book us up. So we have be happy to help with that. Cool. Thanks so much, Dan. It's been good to chat with you. And yeah. I hope it's been helpful to everyone else. Um, and we'll send out a follow-up email, right, with some of those links. And obviously it will be available for anyone who's not live to grab the recording on the replay as well. Cool. And also, too, just some feedback. The e-course is from Gay on the chat. The e-course is worth far more than they are charging. So, Kate, sounds like we need to raise some prices, right? All right. So maybe maybe we're going to get it now before we Grab do. It now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grab it the next five minutes. No. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I'm glad I was Awesome. Uh, well, cool. Well, thanks a lot, Kate. Uh, as usual, you are a, a great wealth of knowledge and, and resource and, and fantastic information and stuff too. And uh, uh, thanks for everybody for, for joining us. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and sign off too. I'll monitor the chat, see if there's any other questions there and uh, help out for, for a little bit as I can. But uh, uh, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know uh, what we can do or what you know, questions you might have or even suggestions for future resources. Don't forget to buy the course uh, and maybe uh, grab a consult with one of us right now too at that uh, super deep discount. So uh, thank you everyone and have an awesome fist bump day.